Hi guys, this is Sam Sturgis from Pure Performance Training in Needham, Massachusetts. And I wanted to talk to you guys today about building an off-season baseball training program. Uh, so once fall baseball ends, a lot of people aren't exactly sure what to do or what not to do. So I wrote out this presentation to hopefully clarify how I would outline an off-season program. So you've gotten to the end of fall baseball, which is typically the middle or the end of October, and you're looking to figure out what to do next. Uh, the first thing that I'm telling people to do is put the glove away and stop throwing for a few months. Throwing a baseball is violent and it's a destructive motion uh, on the shoulder and elbow. So we really want to make sure that when young guys have accumulated a ton of innings throughout the spring and summer seasons, that you're able to take advantage of some downtime and allow these joints to deload so they can heal. Uh, the research that's out there demonstrates that you know guys are five times more likely to get hurt if they don't take at least three to four months off from throwing per year. So we can see pretty definitively that it's really important to take advantage of this rest period. Um, and then as far as training goes, you should have about five, six months of off season where you can really get after it and work on becoming a better athlete. So you're working on things like strength, power, mobility, recovery and endurance, you know, amongst other things. And then playing another sport can also meet these needs as long as you're able to manage, you know, a training program while playing a sport uh, appropriately. So on the previous slide, I mentioned becoming more of a generalist. Uh, so what does this mean? This means getting away from hitting, getting away from throwing and other baseball specific activities for a couple of months and working on general aspects of just being a good athlete, like strength, power, endurance, mobility. Uh, you could be working on rehabbing a, a nagging injury that bothered you throughout the previous baseball season, or you might be looking to reacquire some mobility that you lost uh, during the previous season. Um, as you work through the off season, the specificity of training will increase and get more and more sport specific as you get closer to the season. But early on, you'll want to focus on you know, getting back to things that make you a good athlete. Um, there are going to be three main categories of our off-season program that we really want to focus on. Uh, the first of which is going to be, um, you know, coming up with a good arm care program. Um, so what does this mean? I mean, each person, it's different. Uh, this could mean, you know, increasing your shoulder and thoracic mobility, being able to move a little bit better. This could mean addressing some rotator cuff weakness. So if you're if you're really run down after a season and you've thrown a lot of innings, your rotator cuff is going to be weaker than when you started. So this could be a need that needs to be addressed. Um, you could be super, super loose, uh, which we find pretty often with throwers, and you might need to create some more control at the shoulder joint. So we just need to come up with a good actionable plan that's specific to what you need to accomplish. Uh, then we have strength training, right? So strength training over the course of the off season is another integral piece of the puzzle, right? So a well thought out individualized program can really pay dividends on the diamond when you're met with physical demands that need to be taken seriously and you need to prepare for them if you want to give yourself the best chance to optimize performance and minimize uh, the risk of injury. And then as far as breaking up the off season, I usually separate uh, this into three different phases, which we'll discuss in a bit. And then, of course, nutrition needs to be addressed, right? So we need to make sure that, you know, your daily actions in the kitchen align with what you're trying to accomplish during the off season. You might want to gain weight uh, and increase power and velocity. You might want to lose weight and increase quickness and agility. Or you might just want to maintain the weight where it's at and uh, simply just improve the quality of, of movement and just develop general athleticism. So whatever your goals are, you need to you know, plan accordingly with, with your nutritional goals. So phase one is all about creating a platform for the rest of the off season. You want to build overall work capacity, muscular endurance, and improve overall recovery. So these methods that I've listed here are different pro programming methods that I like to use as part of this phase. Uh, the cardiac output circuits uh, are going to make up a big part of this phase as we're trying to accumulate higher work volumes and increase the total duration of work, but we're maintaining a level of intensity that's relatively low. So you're trying to stay within a range of 130 to 150 beats per minute. Um, the tempo method uh, can be used with several different upper and lower body exercises like split squats or squats, 
push-up variations, row variations are, are usually pretty effective with this method. And we're just trying to improve muscular endurance by increasing time under tension with minimal rest. The high resistance intervals are drills that you can incorporate um, that are going to Im improve overall recovery and the endurance of explosive fast twitch muscle fibers. So if we think in the context of being a baseball player, you need to be explosive and powerful. We also have to maintain that over the course of a seven to nine inning game, depending on what level of baseball you're at. Uh, so these, these qualities definitely need to be addressed. Also, at the beginning of the off season, some guys are going to feel great and they're going to be ready to attack uh, the program as it is, or they're going to need to have more rehab oriented goals. So they may, you know, they may feel banged up and they might need to address some hip or shoulder range of motion. Uh, they might need to restore position and function of a shoulder and their thorax, you know, before we really start loading things up um, in the next phase of training. So for high resistance intervals, sled pushing or heavy med ball throwing is going to work best for these. Uh, typically, we're working at 100% intensity uh, for eight seconds. Uh, then we rest for 90 seconds to two minutes. Uh, if you want to be more specific here, you can use a heart rate monitor. And then whenever you get down to 130 beats per minute, you'll resume your work intervals again. Uh, typically, 10 to 20 sets of these are ideal for this, this method of training. So here are a couple examples of a tempo method. Uh, these should be programmed at the end of a cardiac output day or an HRI day, just because you're going to be accumulating quite a bit of fatigue. Usually I would program one upper body variation with a lower body variation. Um, each rep should take between six and eight seconds. Uh, each set should take between 45 to 60 seconds, followed by 45 to 60 seconds of rest. Uh, and then we'll repeat three to six times. Uh, and then you'll want to program once or twice each week. So now that we've gotten to phase two, this is going to really be the meat and potatoes of the off season, uh, where the focus is now shift towards force production, so strength and power. And you're also going to start transitioning back into your return to throwing programs. You're going to start getting some swings in or even some fielding work, depending on the availability of indoor space or even depending on the weather outside uh, that you may have. Um, and this is really where we're going to start um, transitioning to a little bit more uh, sports specific training and also your skill work. So here you have it. Uh, these are really the go to movements on the strength and, and power exercise menu that I highly suggest that you work with. Uh, each person is going to utilize different variations depending on you know, their injury history or their training experience, their position, amongst other variables, but we'll, we'll go through these in a little bit. So let's start breaking down this exercise menu. Okay, so we're going to start with deadlifts. Uh, these are some of my favorite lower body strength building uh, exercises. Um, because you can pretty much work around any limitation in mobility. Uh, they offer up a great training effect in the posterior chain. So think about your hamstrings and your glutes, uh, where these muscles play a tremendous role in producing force and power during hitting, throwing, and sprinting. So we want to focus heavily on these, you know, as you're training. Uh, I've listed out some variations here that you can use depending on the equipment that you have available and what is the best fit for you technique-wise. The kettlebell deadlift is going to be the simplest as far as loading and setup goes. Uh, and then eventually, as you get more comfortable, you can progress to a trap bar deadlift where you're standing inside of the bar uh, and you can start to add load to these. Uh, as I've pictured here, this is a sumo deadlift. And the main difference here is that the bar is out in front of me. So that's going to place more of a shearing force on my spine versus with a kettlebell or a trap bar deadlift. These are more of a compressive force on my spine. Um, so we want to make sure that you're doing the appropriate one depending on if you have any sort of injury history with your hips or your back. So we want to make sure that you're doing the correct variations to be safe. So squats are another big player uh, during this phase of programming. I typically have people do these on opposite days from deadlifting just to spread out the overall training load. 
Uh, for baseball guys, instead of programming traditional back squats with a barbell, uh, I usually select more shoulder-friendly variations, like this one in the video here. Um, we're using a safety squat bar. You can also use a giant cambered bar, or even if you don't have specialty barbells, um, you could use a, a dumbbell in more of a goblet position, just because we don't want to be forcing people uh, into lots of back extension and forced shoulder external rotation, uh, as it can be tough on your shoulder and elbows. And then for some guys, squatting and deadlifting bilaterally just aren't great options. So this could be due to their specific injury history or they may have extremely limited mobility uh, where hip hinging or squatting to parallel bilaterally isn't really feasible without risking injury. Uh, so oftentimes we'll utilize heavy single leg work uh, to be a better alternative solution. Um, so starting out, you can do split squats. Uh, then eventually progressing into more dynamic movements like reverse lunges like we've got in the video here, uh, forward lunges which are uh, more sagittally oriented, uh, and then progressing into lateral lunge variations which are more of a challenge in the frontal plane. Push-ups are a great option for uh, building upper body strength and I like these the most as they allow your shoulder blades to move freely on the back of your rib cage versus being pinned into the floor or a bench uh, like with some uh, traditional bench press exercises. Uh, the options are pretty much endless as far as variations are concerned. Just pick whatever uh, you can perform with excellent technique. Uh, sometimes this means elevating your hands a little bit just so you can maintain proper form. Uh, but as you get better and better, um, you know, try and progress to slightly more difficult variations and eventually even loading these with, with chains or bands, you know, as we can uh, continue to build strength. So for guys that can't do a ton of push-ups because of technique or a lack of upper body strength, starting with floor presses or dumbbell presses um, can be a great option in the meantime. Um, also, these drills are, are good if you're trying to gain, you know, body size and weight in the off seasons as you can load these pretty well. Um, barbell bench pressing has never really been an inclusion in my programming for baseball guys just because of the load that it places on the anterior shoulder. Uh, but fortunately we have a multi-purpose bar as we see here in the video at PPT. So we can utilize a safer, more neutral grip and still get all the benefits um, without throwing your shoulders under the bus. So if you have access to one of these, this is a nice alternative to a regular bar. Now, rowing variations are, are also key for developing upper body strength. Um, I like these because you can focus on utilizing good scapular motion on the back of your rib cage and creating a little bit of thoracic or upper trunk rotation. Uh, I, I often suggest opting for um, single arm variations as much as possible because most guys you know, might tend to crank into end range thoracic extension if they don't have the, the core control that they need. Um, and then you can use a bunch of different equipment options, you know, from cables, you could support your chest on a bench, you could use dumbbells or kettlebells, and if you have one, you could use a TRX as well. So now we're going to look at some power development drills, and I've got a couple here uh, that we, we like to start people off with. So we've got more of an overhead med ball slam where we're trying to control excessive back extension as we reach overhead and slam the ball into the ground. Uh, the next drill is more of a hip toss drill you can use earlier in the off season while you're still down from throwing. You can start working on improving your weight shifting and receiving force in your front hip. And then you can progress into more of a shot put throwing drill as you're trying to replicate throwing a little bit more closely. And then as we get closer to the season, trying to implement some more position specific footwork or try and reproduce the motions and stresses you might see in practices and game action. So an example of something that I might program uh, would be this rock back rollover slam where we have a good weight shift and explosive pull down motion you'd get while you were throwing. So we're just trying to get as specific as possible here. So you're almost there. It's February and you've hopefully started hitting and throwing and you should be really close to being ready for tryouts in four to six weeks. Uh, so at this point, your training load is going to decrease gradually the closer you get to March. Now the volume of strength training will become lower and lower and you should be focusing more on you know, drills like speed development uh, and things that might have a little more direct carryover positionally. Uh, this is where training is going to be slightly deprioritized and skill work becomes more of your focus. This doesn't mean stop training, but just be aware that there's a give and take relationship there. Uh, drills that are going to focus on agility and quickness 
uh, or change in direction are going to be a nice fit at this point. Um, they won't necessarily detract from your throwing and hitting programs uh, as those are really ramping up. But at this point, um, you've, you've done your strength training. You're a beast. Now let's get uh, as explosive as possible and take uh, full advantage of the gains that you made this offseason. Here are some examples of uh, drills that would fit nicely into this phase of programming. Uh, so drills like lateral high ends where you're being explosive off one leg and accepting force into the other leg uh, are great. And then eventually you can progress into more integrated sprinting drills that carry demands that are more uh, sport specific and, and can be even position specific. So you just have to be creative with some of these. So guys, first off, thank you very much uh, for taking the time to check out this presentation. Uh, I really enjoy uh, teaching others about how much strength training and, 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 and becoming a better athlete can really take your game to the next level. Uh, it's really important that, you know, for young guys, especially as, as you work towards being a better baseball player, uh, that you have a much greater appreciation uh, for the process and, and how, you're, how you're going to get there. Uh, being consistent, you know, having a solid actual plan with, with both short-term and long-term goals in mind uh, are really going to set you apart from the rest of the guys out there. Um, if, if you have any questions about training or want more specifics on what to do, please feel free to contact us here on the PPT website on our contact page. We're happy to help in any way that we can. Um, you know, best of luck uh, the rest of the off season and, and especially, you know, this upcoming spring and summer baseball season. Uh, I hope you guys uh, are successful. Thanks.